everybody, Beandrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of our Europe Pack Mini Zoo. Yeah, not the Eurasia Pack, not the Conservation Pack, not the twi not all the other ones I've missed in between. Yes, we're still on the Europe Pack Mini Zoo. <laughs> so if you don't know what this uh, series is, <clears throat> there is a playlist link to this and everything. You can go back and watch the first, I want to say there's like five or six episodes out, but yeah, when the Twilight Pack uh, came out, I started, and the Europe Pack came out, I started building um, in on this zoo here to kind of encapsulate all the new European uh, building assets that we had access to. Um, and yeah, really liked how this zoo was coming out. A uh, really cool uh, European, like Bavarian themed um, village that we built. A um, bunch of really cool enclosures using uh, like waterfalls and a lot of really big um, terrain, cliff changes and everything like that. So uh, yeah, when the Eurasia uh, pack, this new one was announced, I uh, thought it'd be a great time to jump back into uh, this project and go ahead and finish it out uh, with all of our new, um, what the new eight animals uh, that we got with the new Eurasia animal pack. So um, you might be a little confused though, as I was just talking over that entire build there, um, you're probably looking like, where's one of the new animals? I don't see a new animal. And no, th it is not a new animal that went in there. <clears throat> it's new to me and we're gonna get on that a lot um, in today's episode. Um, it was very new to me. I think that was a skunk from uh, what would have been the North American animal pack. I'm not fully sure. Uh, but yeah, so this is my first Planet Zoo build, as many of you know, in about a year and a half. And that is a heck of a lot of uh, animal packs and building packs and you name it packs uh, that I am not familiar with at all. Um, big shout out and big thanks to Frontier because over that time they were still sending me packs. I was still checking them out um, uh, periodically when I would have time to check them out and everything uh, but yeah for the most part I am just kind of going in uh, blind with all of these new items that we have and all the new uh, pretty much all the new grasses that's what I've noticed with um, all, a lot of the new uh, really really good useful pieces that oh my gosh it is just planet grass now there's just every kind of grass buffalo grass uh, wildflower grass just you know sea seaweed grass, I don't know, there's just a whole bunch of new ones. I just keep hitting the favorite button on a whole lot of stuff there. So, um, but anyways, enough of that. Let's talk about what the heck is going on in the build today. So as you saw the first little bit there, like I said, we built a, just kind of a starter habitat, kind of something for me to get my feet wet again, kind of uh, look at all the, like I said, all the new grasses, all the new trees and foliage and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, built a nice little skunk habitat right next to our European badger habitat. Um, and now we are quickly flying through uh, a, a uh, farm build. So this is one of our big, big primary builds of the video today. Um, so yeah, we have a nice little uh, tunnel pathway underneath our main corridor from our main Bavaria, uh, uh, excuse me, our main Bavarian town. Um, have a nice little tunnel that you can see off to the right-hand side that cuts underneath that now. Um, again, this project really, really wanting to uh, mess with a lot of the terrain changes and get a lot of really cool um, just uh, hills and mountainsides and uh, again, a lot of cool terrain changes, water um, mixing in, a lot of just like, what would you call it, kinetic energy, just a lot of really cool energy between uh, people walking below and underneath each other, water going everywhere, different uh, foliage and buildings interacting with each other. So yeah, really having a lot of fun uh, jumping back into everything with that. So, um, but yeah, as we're starting to leave the Bavarian village, as you can kind of see uh, behind there, I wanted to start to kind of get out into our rural uh, type areas, more of a farmland um, type vibe and everything. So uh, that is what I am um, trudging my way through uh, today with. So we're starting off with just a few uh, basic uh, structures here that we're gonna kind of multiply around. If you don't know my building style, I tend to like to do that. I'll build out um, two or three, maybe a few more, but not that many, not too many uh, different types of buildings. And I'll just kind of take a few uh, baseline buildings that we build, build out here and just kind of tinker with them, edit them, uh, but kind of keep the same uh, structure um, throughout the entire thing. Again, with the two or three uh, similar buildings, just with different details kind of attached to them to make them a little different from each other and everything. So uh, the one big main one is, again, big main uh, farm building. We can stick some maybe like zookeeper huts in there, um, some veterinarian, um, uh, buildings and stuff like that, some workshops, uh, stuff like that. Not doing any interiors on this one, kind of staying away from the uh, interiors. I am starting to notice a uh, pretty good uh, lag in the uh, game now. I mean, I am letting in uh, guests and I did forget um, after all this time that letting guests into your zoo is a big no-no, right? That's uh, that's kind of like Planet Zoo 101 if you're going into high detailed build is, uh, no, close the zoo to guests or only let in like 500 guests or something uh, really small uh, like 
that basically. So yeah, that is one thing I need to do is turn the guests off because I think I'm up to like 3,000 guests coming in there. Um, and yeah, all of the uh, foliage and really I think the grasses, I'm not sure um, how you know well optimized they are, but it doesn't really matter when I'm placing down hundreds of thousands of them basically. So <laughs> um, yeah, the zoo, I'm just kind of going around and just placing around all of those different grasses because oh my gosh, it makes everything look so much better. But every single time I click on the ground with another one of these um, grasses or bushes, I'm just like, ooh, ah. Oh, I can hear my computer starting to sweat just a little bit more. So um, yeah, having to kind of keep an eye on that. So um, but as we continue forward here, I did take a reference from this, um, for this building here from a, just, I typed in like top, like most beautiful places in Bavaria or something like that. Cause again, I'm really taking all my inspiration from that part of the, uh, from that part of Germany. Um, but yeah, I think I found a Google map uh, link to one of these towns and just again went outside the town um, in the uh, first person view of Google Maps found one of these farms that looks just picturesque it's like holy cow that's a real place I, I would never think of it you know you think it'd be like a museum kind of thing um, but anyways no we went ahead and um, kind of modeled after that so yeah I had a lot of fun um, building the uh, the European farms kind of compared to the um, American farms that I'm very very much uh, used to from where I'm from I'm come I'm from the heartland of USA right I see uh, the big red typical American farm barns all over the place. Um, so it was really cool to see the little uh, differences between, you know, European farmsteads and uh, American ones. Um, you know, one of the big ones I can tell is that um, just European ones are just obviously a lot older. I, I mean, I, I, that's so dumb to say because it's like, well, duh. But, you know, it's you just can feel the old vibe to all of them. All these structures look like they've been there for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, built all this really old stone. And um, I just love the character uh, that you get with these um, uh, again, old uh, like farm homesteads or these old farmsteads and everything. So I uh, really like that vibe. And this was the main part right here that kind of sold me on doing this uh, reference image. Uh, nice little um, water wheel right in the middle of it there. Um, so it's probably like some sort of water mill or whatever this leads into that building. But yeah, I thought that was a really nice uh, main focus of the uh, structure there. So uh, now we have the general layout of the farm kind of set up. Time to start into the uh, get into the detailing uh, part of things. Always the very, very fun part here. So we're taking our original structure, some other structures that I've used in my Thornton Hills Zoo build as well, um, that you just saw some of the storage units and stuff, just kind of recoloring them to uh, fit into our build and everything. And uh, definitely wanted to get this in there as well. That was one of the main focuses is I wanted to get a nice overview look of our eventual uh, wasent or European bison uh, habitat. So we are starting to prepare for that. Uh, right now we're mapping out our second enclosure that's going to be over in this area. We don't get to this um, today. That'll be our next episode where we build our second enclosure. But here, right here, you can see we jumped ahead and um, went ahead and kind of mapped out where the wasent are going to be. So I uh, really wanted to get that big open grassland feel to it. There's all of our wasent. I think we have about 12 of them. I really wanted to uh, fill it out, get a nice herd going. Is it a herd? I can't remember if they're called a herd or if it's some other um, name that I haven't heard of before. But anyways, um, yeah, I really wanted to get a good vibe, good uh, amount of wasent out there um, hanging out. And yeah, I wanted to get a good mixture of uh, closer to the raised platform area, uh, have a nice big grassland uh, field, and then kind of over near the keeper hut across from there, we're going to have a nice blending of a forested uh, area. And it's really neat to see them kind of uh, blend between the two areas areas kind of go into the woods to kind of uh, relax and get away from everyone get into the shade and everything and then uh, come out into the big grassland uh, area and uh, really it's really cool seeing them run around in herds you see like three or four of them uh, kind of running together and it's, it's it's a lot of fun so there you go there's the fast forward uh, button there's a fast forward sound speeding up the video a heck of a lot now because it is uh, it's grass time and man out of context any other YouTube video uh, the YouTube bots would be going sorry what was that it's what time and they would like demonetize me but no it's just we're it's a video game where we literally place grass down a lot just it's not weird okay so anyways <laughs> um yeah the, i'm I, like i said i'm having a ton of fun with all of these new options that we have uh for foliage and everything this game is just like bar none um just way up there with the amount of you know options that we have to really uh, make these habitats just look so so amazing and uh, really at the end of it something that I found that um, really made it come alive is uh, adding in the long grass afterwards so you add in all of this this is all like buffalo grass I think it's called uh, the dry and um, 
alive buffalo grass. But then if you go in afterwards with the terrain brush and kind of use the long grass in certain areas or just all over it, you get this waving motion because the long grass in game actually has like motion, like wind motion to it. A lot of these um, grasses that we're placing down, like the buffalo grass and all the wildflower grasses, they're, they're very stationary. Um, that'd be one thing that'd be really cool is if we can get um, them to move like in the wind like the long grasses do. I'm sure that's extremely hard to do as from a mechanical standpoint, but um, and either way. Um, but yeah, no, I just love, you know, the quicker or the more that we're going through here, uh, the more that, you know, every single piece that you place down, it just fills in the area. There you go. There's a nice view of the uh, grass real quick, but um, it just really fills in the area really, really well um, for this. So, um, but yeah, as we're uh, building out our forested area, I would like to mention that um, I am using, um, I believe, two mods for this build right now, uh, one of which you will have to download if you want to uh, get into this build to do it. Um, I tried everything I could to get rid of all of the pieces from uh, this mod so that it could be kind of just open to everyone to do, but uh, for the life of me, I can't find all of the pieces to the European Midnight Pack. Um, in here so yeah there's like probably some teeny tiny little scenery piece that i built with you know a year and a half ago in here um and i just for the life of me cannot find it so um i did try my best to try and get all the um scenery modded pieces out of there so that everyone could play it uh but it, like i said unfortunately i can't find them all so uh that is the one scenery mod that you will have to have to have to uh download to get into this zoo if you don't it will uh just crash the game it's not detrimental to your game or any other uh files or anything you just won't be able to open this zoo, unfortunately. So um, as I start to link this zoo, because that is my plan, I want to start to link this zoo, um, this project to people to kind of explore as I'm building and everything. I'll be sure to link that mod as well um, so that you folks can download that. And if you're not familiar how to download mods in Planet Zoo, uh, there are a number of amazing videos uh, by many of our wonderful content creator and modder friends out there. Uh, so I'll try to remember to either link that down below or if you just type in Planet Zoo, how to install mods, there are so many great videos out there uh, that you will be able to find and everything. So, and then the other mod that I am using is the free build mod. I feel like that is just like something that everyone should have in their um, itinerary, regardless of your view on mods or anything uh, that doesn't really affect the game as far as I'm aware for So if you folks uh, do download the, uh, the map and don't have free build, it should, everything should just still come up normal for you. You just won't have access to the free build mod. Uh, but some of the things that I was able to accomplish with the free build mod um, you won't have access to basically one of those things is um, didn't mention it but if you see the um, keeper access to the wasent uh, habitat that is now pretty much finished up there uh, but anyways the wasent habitat there uh, normally the height would be too small and you get a red like uh -uh, can't do that kind of thing um, underneath the pathway there but with the free build mod it kind of says don't care what you say game we're gonna do it anyways <laughs> and that's one of the great things about the free build mod there so um, um, anyways, we are going into some great detailing here. This is my most fun aspect of Planet Zoo. If you again, if you're new to the channel, hi, hello, how are you? Welcome aboard. Um, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> um, but also, um, we are big into uh, intricate little detailings all over the place. My good buddy uh, S. Dan Wolf and myself have a project out there called uh, Beyond Wolf Nature Preserve, and that is. Um, all about just the small intricate details and kind of uh, muddying everything up, kind of getting just little bits and bobs all over the place. So him and I really kind of pride ourselves on trying to uh, detail out, put all the little junk and caboodles in every single corner there and fill it all out. So yeah, this was, uh, this was just kind of like riding a bike, this whole, uh, this whole episode. By the end of it, I'm full on doing wheelies and uh, jumps and everything. Near the beginning of the episode, I'm like, what's a... Uh, What's a zoo? What do you, what is a, how do you, what does the shift button do? I'm actually like, I, like I'm like being, trying to be funny there, but a little bit of me, it was like, oh my gosh, I have got to knock the rust off. Um, not only from a mechanical standpoint, remembering what all the buttons do and learning all the new buttons and everything, um, but also from a create, uh, creative standpoint, you know, it's kind of like that skunk habitat. I was like, okay, cool. I know what grasses are. I know what bushes are. Very cool. And then we get into this stuff and it's like, okay, yeah, props. And you know, you start to remember all just the little tricks and details and uh, tips and all that kind of things that you've uh, acquired over the years and uh, just start to reapply them to your builds and everything. So no, it's been, uh, been a lot of fun just kind of jumping up on that bike and uh, getting used to um, playing again and uh, no we uh, 
I'm already recorded a bunch of stuff ahead of time, so we should have episodes of this coming out um, uh, pretty regularly until we kind of finish it up there. Um, we're not going to get to it today, very unfortunate, but um, next episode we're going to be having like a, a Christmas build in the middle of the Bavarian village to kind of cap off the Bavarian village. So we'll do that um, with, yeah, again, with like a German Christmas house build. Uh, we have a European like village that kind of, uh, again, starts to cap off the end of the main, main village area. So you have like a rural European village, uh, some buildings made by a user named Rown, R-R-O-W-N. Really, really cool buildings. I think I have them linked down in the description down below. Check them out. Uh, so we have those for the next episodes. We got some new animals we got to put in. Uh, we got to do like the Takin and the Sega and a whole bunch of the new Eurasian animal pack um, animals uh, for this area, um, for the farm area at least, the very direct area, we have the Wascent uh, next to it, the habitat that you saw me starting to build next to it. I think I want to put in the uh, European or the Eurasian lynx. Um, so we'll do that and then maybe the red fox. I kind of want to have a vibe of like what animals um, that we have access to in the game, like kind of affect farmers in Europe and um, in Eurasia and stuff like that. So um, just doing a little bit of research, like the Wascent, they kind of do some damage sometimes if they get too um, into like the farmers like uh, fields and stuff like that, they'll eat through their uh, crops and all that kind of fun stuff. The red fox, uh, very bad for uh, their pests. They're seen as pests for like uh, livestock and um, you know other things like that. Um, and what the lynx, uh, kind of the same thing as the fox, not as much because it's very secretive. It doesn't like humans as far as I, um, as much as I've read, they really stay away from humans a lot, but um, they w have been known to go onto farms and it's kind of same thing, get into like uh, chickens or livestock or um, just a whole bunch of other things. So I think those three would be good we do have room for maybe one more animal so why don't you find folks comment down below uh, what other animal do we it doesn't have to be from the Eurasian animal pack it can be any um, animal in the game or any of the DLCs um, what other animal do you think maybe like a wolf a wolf could maybe be kind of cool but then we'd have two predators uh, maybe another um, non predator type animal would be good over here um, kind of skipped over it real quick but speaking of habitats um, quickly made a rabbit and chicken coop little area they, these aren't usable obviously we don't have rabbits or chickens in the game um, that aren't in the base game that is um, but yeah I thought it would be kind of a fun little area where the probably kids or families could kind of go in there and um, you know I don't know about pet but just kind of feed the uh, the uh what are we trying to say? The rabbits there. There's the rabbits and the chickens and everything. So, um, but anyways, yeah, let me know about um, another animal habitat that would kind of fit the uh, the European farm vibe here and everything. So uh, going through using a bunch of blueprints, again, down below in the description, have a bunch of links for some of the blueprints that I used um, in this build and some of the blueprints that I use in a lot of my builds. So uh, definitely check those out if you're interested there. And yeah, for the most part, for the rest of it there, well, we just kind of fill out all of the foliage, rock work, uh, really t uh, start to put a bow um, on this uh, entire area there, start to uh, really wrap it up and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and let the time lapse play out but like i said i do have um a few more episodes kind of ready um to edit ready to record and everything like that i'm um, all ready to go uh so we'll have some more um uh, videos yeah very very shortly that's what i'm trying to spit out very very shortly hopefully after this one comes out but yeah do let me know what other animal would you like to see in this um, area that kind of fits the vibe and everything uh how are you liking the eurasian animal pack what is your favorite animal from the pack um what is your favorite thing to build for for it um yeah all that kind of fun stuff there always love to hear from you fine folks again if this is your first time hanging out with us don't forget to hit that subscribe button we have new videos come out for planet zoo city skylines 2 and prehistoric kingdom that don't don't forget prehistoric kingdom just had a really big update so we're going to check that out with the spinosaurus and swimming dinosaurs and everything like that so lots of fun stuff on the channel all simulation and building focus and everything so hey i'm gonna get out of here you folks enjoy the rest of the time lapse there and yeah until the next europe pack mini zoo oh yeah that's the other thing if you're here still by the end of it now we need a new name for this zoo <laughs> i can't keep calling it the europe pack mini zoo so we got to think of something different don't we so yeah let me know what you uh, think down below thanks as always see you in the next one Thank you.